there is an alternative way of doing that that can be another approach to talking about where do we have the most addresses. Then simply taking some suitable polygon and then counting how many points are inside them. Um, so we could have polygons such as postal codes or municipalities or in Copenhagen we have this rule which is a statistical uh, socioeconomical units that we have inside the Copenhagen and we can then use those to count how many addresses are we in. Or if we wish we can generate what is called a fishnet. A fishnet is a series of square grids that can be used exactly for this type of purpose. So our map has a tool called fishnet that can be used to, uh, to generate um, these polygons. So once we have our polygons, we can um, do our intersection of our points. We can summarize based on our where we group on our polygon ID. We can then join this table into our polygons um, and then show them. Alternatively, ArcMap has a tool called Spatial Join that does exactly these steps of intersecting and doing some statistics and joining. So all of these two, three steps are collected in one tool, which is called Spatial Join. So what Spatial Join is that it takes the polygons that we want to count inside, we take whatever we want to count, we have an output, we leave it as a join one to one, so and that's important even though there are many points that we want to um, count as one, uh, or join into that one polygon, we keep it as one because then it will generate one polygon which has the aggregation of the points in it and we can then aggregate the different attributes in different ways. Um, down in this part here we can specify, I'll show that in a moment, we can specify how we do our aggregations and um, finally we can say that there has to be an intersection of them. But let's look at how this is in um, ArcMap. So first of all we need to generate our fishnet. So I'll start out creating a toolbox, my a new model in my toolbox. So let's create a new model. And the first thing doesn't really need any uh, data is just generate this fishnet. And I can never remember where it is. It's somewhere down on the data management, something around. So I just do a search for fishnet. So create fishnet, and it's down under data management as I expected. I can click here, and it will show me it's under feature classes, create fishnet. So I will ask for this, um, and we need to set some different properties. So we have to give it a output file. Um, in my distance demo, I call it fishnet. It has to know an area that I want to work with and I'll just say the same as my addresses. Like that. It now wants to know, I have to give some of these, I don't have to give all of them even though they all are mandatory, but if I start saying that my sales want to be um, 100 by 100 meters, and you can see that as soon as I fill out, it knows that if I'm going to make 100 by 100 meters within this area, it knows how many I need, so I don't have to fill that out. And I also have a corner that it knows. And then very, very importantly, down here, it, it will, can create them as polylines. We don't want, we want polygons. So we change this one to our polygons. Okay. So now we have a fishnet and it will also create a fishnet label. Don't need that for anything. But if you wanted to put labels on it, we have that. Then we want to do our spatial join. 
Um, so I can just get search. So we have our space and join. Um, and it was up in our analysis tools under Overlay, and here we have the spatial join. So I put that in. And what we want to do is we want to count addresses. So I'll need my addresses. And this is a real address, it's not my street addresses. And I have these, and this is then my uh, joint features and this is my target feature. So if I go in here it says that I'm going to create a version of my fishnet it's going to be called fishnet spatial join thing here. It's going to join data from the attributes in it and I can then do different things such as it's going to um, keep all of them even though they are some that I not have any address in it I'm going to do a one-to-one -one. and of course it will by default down here if you see these are the attributes and if I right click on them it will say that it would give me the first so of all the addresses that fall in one of my fishnet squares it will give me the first road code and the first house number and so on Basically, I'm not interested in this information. I'm only interested in knowing how many there are, and it always creates what is called a join count. So it will do that anyway. So I'll say OK. And uh, this final layer here, I will then want to add that to my display and run my model. Now the model is finished running, and it took some time, but significantly shorter than our kernel density. I now have this data set here um, where I have a lot of small squares or 100 by 100 meters and the interesting thing is that if I go in and open that attribute of them you see they have this join count many of them are zero because there's quite a lot out in the sea where there is no one but if I sort this one according here you see that the one that has the highest has 500 addresses within that 100 by 100 meter area. So I want to display this density, if you wish, or what you call it. And um, so I'll go in, I will take them in properties, and symbologies, and quantities, and my join count. Yeah, and there's lots of them, I know. I guess go in and uh, increase, or at least one zero. Um, so now it's know how many there are. Um, we can see it's a strongly skewed data set. So I would probably, I'll just say I want 10 classes and I want to make them as quartile. So we have the main, most of them down there. Um, and uh, yeah, that looks fine. So we still got those annoying black lines. Um, if we want to get rid of them, what we can do is that we in here, we go in and say properties of all symbols. And then we have our outline color, set that to none, and set the width also, because otherwise you'll just have a white line or a non-colored line around them. So set both the color to none and the width to none. And, um, we can now see that we do get, this is the image we do we get when we do a count on the fishnet and that compares relatively well to this kernel density which is the blue one here. So we get similar results in those two approaches. Uh, the fishnet or the doing the spatial join on polygons gives us some other flexibilities and in some ways are easier to understand than the more complexity of our kernel um, density. So, but still we have a relatively clear idea of where we are have to have or where we have many addresses 
and if you compare them to difficult to see the red circles on this red background but we can see out here that there are these same areas that needs some additional train support or bus support or whatever to get into the transport network so that was the alternative to doing our um, kernel so we had these two when talking about concentration it is in many ways the same as doing a density those two words but the point density calculates exactly how many stations or addresses are within a specific distance and the drawback is that the highest density does not necessarily have to be where you have the most of your points if you use the kernel density you can envision it as being ice cream blobs on top of each other um, and then the kernel density being the height of all of these accumulated ice cream blobs then that will ensure that you have a highest value where you have the most observations um, but again it there are pros and cons on those two tools which one to use um, and finally we had this alternative approach to doing a concentration where we had some polygons and we then used our spatial join tool to count how many addresses were in those polygons and if we don't have some appropriate polygons so we don't want to use the zip code or postal districts or um, uh, all the code in Copenhagen these socio-economical statistical units we could generate a fishnet so a grid of square polygons uh, where we then can do the counting inside and that would also give us a concentration map 